Hey there friends and enemies, Joper here again, and we got a massive Diablo 4 patch today, and I wanted to go over the patch notes with you guys because this is going to be the last major update before Season 1, so there's a lot of important things to keep in mind with this update. So let's jump right into it. All these bug fixes are really positive. We're going to have dungeon, event, and other activity bug fixes, gameplay fixes. We're also going to have local co-op fixes, quest fixes, uh, UI updates, and then finally miscellaneous as well. I'm not going to go over these specific but I want to say that this is a good sign that there are so many of these updates because a lot of these things are relatively minor and many players might not have experienced them. However, they can add up. So you have a bug happen that kind of leads to a hiccup in the game and then you have another bug and then a third bug that's when it starts to get a bit more tedious and really start to wear on you as a player so i'm glad that they're fixing all the stuff even the ones that are not major issues right now because there's a lot of things in the game that i think there are causing some problems especially when you're running a hardcore character those little issues can mean the difference between surviving and dying and anytime you lose a hardcore character whether it's server issues whether it's a bug anything like that can be devastating so i understand them wanting to tackle as many of these as possible now the other thing to keep in mind from the june 26th to the 27th there will be background maintenance on diablo 4 so if you are playing a hardcore character maybe take those two days off and not really jump in because there's bound to be some hiccups with the servers that always tends to happen when maintenance is ongoing so just keep that in mind i think it's something to to think about and it's for me personally it's something that i always do i always stay away from doing hardcore characters whenever there is maintenance in the background but now we're getting to the meat of this patch that i am most excited about so first and foremost we got some gameplay adjustments these are things that they have talked about in the past and i'm glad are finally here significantly increase the experience awarded for completing nightmare dungeons significantly increase the experience gained from killing monsters in nightmare dungeons both of those quality changes you combine that with this change down here that players can now teleport to their nightmare dungeons directly through the map and you will see that nightmare dungeons have become far more efficient for end game farming going forward they were already the best stop spot for your glyphs and the best spot for getting new gear but now you're actually going to be able to level your characters pretty efficiently while you are actually playing those nightmare dungeons you don't have to do some cheeses and everything in order to level your characters quickly you can actually do the nightmare dungeons get the gear that you want get the experience that you want and then teleport right to the next nightmare dungeon and rinse and repeat and i think that's a major quality change we're going to see also hell tide chests now provide substantially more bonus experience significantly increased reward experience from completing individual wish and then fix an issue where no experience was awarded for completing the holdout style event that can occur after fin finishing dungeon objectives you also have uh the helltide roaming bosses will now more consistently drop higher quality loot and weekly bonus caches from world bosses no longer have a level requirement for opening all of those are good changes where diablo is going to succeed in the end game is having a bit of diversity the nightmare dungeons are good but you want to have options right if i get bored of nightmare dungeons i want to be able to farm helltide and still feel like i'm getting value from that i want to take on world bosses still get value from that i want to redeem my whispers and really get value from that as well maybe they're not as efficient or as good as nightmare dungeons but they're going to provide me a different gameplay option so i can kind of do something different every now and then again shake things up and not play the same things over and over and over again this is especially true when you have multiple characters that you are farming for so for me personally i think that's a good change and i hope we have as much of that content that is viable or at least semi-viable as possible so you can continue to take on all that different amount types of content and be feel like you're rewarded for it that's one of the downsides sometimes with these games is that you can have a variety of content but if it doesn't feel rewarding it, does, it ultimately is fairly use, useless so ultimately i like all these changes developer notes we are currently working on increasing the monster and elite density of end game content and plan to introduce this change early in season one i would love this especially for hell tides hell tides feel like they're half empty sometimes and i'm just kind of riding around on my horse looking for enemies same thing with nightmare dungeons where you can go and kill a mob of enemies and then your build is just ramping up you're getting all these buffs and then everything is dead and you have to restart all over again once you find the, the next small group of enemies so i'm hopeful that that is going to be a thing going forward especially as we get 
months and years into this game and we're going to need uh heavy mobs of enemies because your builds are going to get more and more refined over time you're going to have better gear you're going to have a uh, better idea on how to play the character so that way you really want a bunch of mobs a bunch of elites and ways to really test your builds and make yourself feel powerful by taking on screens full of enemies and that's something that i'm hopeful for going forward i really think that we'll see that i do understand why they may have started off a little bit smaller with less enemies because again uh obviously that introduces other issues like frame rate issues like new player experience it can be difficult to try and balance all that but now that we've kind of had the game for a few weeks i understand why they would increase that going forward and i'm excited about that change now balance changes we're continuing our efforts to make all class builds feel fun and powerful with another round of balance updates. In particular, we have seen community feedback stating the basic skills aren't impactful enough in combat. Aside from like Arc Lash on the Sorcerer, that's absolutely true. These changes will not change the fundamental relationship between basic skills and core skills, but we hope that they help smooth out the leveling experience while we explore additional ways to strengthen them. We are also increasing the power of some skills that players feel are lagging behind their peers. As we look forward to the future updates, we're monitoring other heavily discussed topics, such as minion survivability and build parity. Please keep sending us your feedback, and we'll see you in Sanctuary. So, essentially how this update is going to work, we're going to see it across all the different classes. You are going to get major buffs to the basic skills, which is going to really help with leveling in the game especially as we head into season one so one of the downsides early on in the game is you can just really feel underwhelming because your basic skills feel kind of weak and that's always going to be the case your later skills your ultimate is just flat out gonna be more powerful than your basic skill right but you also want those basic skills to be an option and that's one thing they haven't been for a lot of classes and a lot of the basic skills so i'm hopeful that this is going to not only improve the leveling experience across all the classes as you get better basic skills but also eventually lead to an option where basic skills are more viable in some of these end game builds where you can maybe mix one in to really recuperate some of your your mana on the sorcerer or whatever the case may be and they become really solid parts of those builds right now that just isn't the case in a lot of instances and so i'm hopeful that that does change in the future now whether that's going to change with this patch i don't think so this patch is primarily in my personal opinion going to make things better from your leveling experience levels 1 to 30 in the season one update so that's really what i'm seeing from this and that's my guess personally so we've got lunging strike bash frenzy flay a lot of good updates base damage increase across all of them you see enhanced bashes fortify etc so a lot of good updates on all of these different options kick cooldown reduced you got charge we got leap iron skin a lot of changes like i said call of the ancients iron maelstrom hopefully some of these options become viable going forward uh like call of the ancients would be really cool to see uh iron maelstrom looks like it got a really big buff because of cooldown reduced uh, bonus critical strike chance increased and then prime iron bonus critical strike damage increased doubled essentially so that's massive i don't know if it's going to be really viable permanently but it looks like a good positive change that will make it hopefully an option as well uh bounding slam base damage increase which is also nice uh the blow includes changes to flat damage legendary aspects these effects scale with item power so we're seeing increased flat damage on Earthquake, uh, Bull Kalthos, uh, Devils, uh, Dust Devils, Windlasher, Devilish, Iron Warrior, and then the items Overkill and Hellhammer. Again, all this is flat damage, which is nice. It looks like it's increased quite a bit, like 0 0.16 to 0 0.25, 2, 0 0.22 to 0 0.32, which again, doesn't seem like a lot, but it could be very, very nice. And I'm excited to see how that all plays out if some of these are actually viable going forward. Then we've got the Druid which has a bunch of base changes as well we got changes to wolves to shred the mall like anytime you see multiple lines in a patch note that's always a good thing pretty much uh like earth spirit base damage increased spirit generated increased fierce earth spike fortify increased so all the stuff like the 
Earth Spike Fortify was doubled, which is, again, anytime you see a double number, it's always going to be a pretty significant change. So, again, I'm excited about all of this. I can't wait to see how it all plays out. I think with all these changes, the meta is definitely going to shift. And it would not surprise me whatsoever if some of these changes end up leading to, like, massive differences in builds that people don't anticipate right now. But as they test things, as they try new skills, something pops up. You're like, wow, this is absolutely broken. And I'm really excited to see how that shakes out. Even though I don't think this is going to be a complete shift in the meta, this is just going to be really for the beginning of Season 1 and hopefully we get some additional updates that will continue to evolve how some of these builds are that are underutilized same thing with the necromancer we've got a lot of changes we got reap decompose hemorrhage uh again bone splinters is a good one uh that i'm very excited to test out myself blood lance bone prison so yeah essentially you're seeing a lot of major changes like iron maiden base damage doubled Horde Iron Maiden damage bonus increased uh, by 5%, which is nice. Uh, yeah, so Bone Spikes was buffed. Ray Skeletons, Golem Minions, you'll now always engage targets with a cast curse. Uh, passives updated, which is nice. Legendary Aspects, flat damage increased on that one. Uh, Frost or Fast Blood, ultimate cooldown reduction increased. So, yeah, overall, I think it's been a very good change. It's a lot of these that are that are good. Same thing with the Rogue. The Rogue, I've seen like maybe two builds be very, very good. So hopefully some of these other options become viable going forward. I would be very excited about that. And then finally, we have the Sorcerer. This is one where uh, the only base skill that I ever see used is Arclash in the end game. Fireball is used as a enchantment. But other than that, none of these are really buff the spark buff is interesting because it's base is increased enhanced spark damage increased and then flickering spark is increased uh the chance increased which is also nice anytime uh, incinerate bonus uh basic damage increased which is again very nice very good changes so we'll see how they actually impact the game i'm not really going to jump on them and say they're uh absolutely game changers at this point but all of these are positive direction and hopefully they're either viable now or with the season one patch they become viable as they get buffed even further that's going to do it for me. I just wanted to go over everything real quick, kind of give my thoughts on where the game is, the update and all that stuff, how this is going to affect the game going forward. My name is Joe Poe. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Helps me out tremendously. Shows you want to see more Diablo 4 content going forward. My name is Joe Poe. I hope you have a good one. I'll catch you all later.